The terrifying truth about Makima is that she's a great leader. She got Denji to fall in love with her, she's got Aki wrapped around her finger, and she puts power in her place. And if you're a manga reader, then I already know what you're thinking, but trust me, it's a lot simpler than that. Makima's really just a good leader. She knows how to persuade people, and she is impossibly good at selling ideas. Which is weird, because she shouldn't be. Great leaders are loud, they're powerful, they have something about them that makes them stand out from others. Makima has none of these qualities. She has everyone else do the fighting for her, and not considering her position as a leader, Makima is almost always in the background. She rarely does anything to stand out. In fact, people were furious when they announced the voice for Makima because she has a very gentle, quiet voice. Which only makes the problem worse. A great leader should have a powerful voice or an iconic voice like Dio's. But Makima's voice in the anime is nothing like that. So it really makes you wonder, besides her looks and other obvious reasons, how was Makima able to lead people when she doesn't do anything to stand out? Well, that's actually kind of the answer. Makima's secret to leading people is telling them exactly what they want to be told. See, there's generally three ways to get people to do what you want. The first is represented by someone I already mentioned, Dio. Dio is so powerful that he inspires people out of fear. Either they do what he says because they fear him, or they devote themselves to him because of his godlike power. Unfortunately, none of us are gods, so you're better off doing like Senku from Dr. Stone. Senku is really good at science, but when he needs something else done like cooking or building, he asks one of his friends to do it. That inspires that person because now someone believes in them, even when they didn't. That is a different kind of charisma that really just comes down to seeing the beauty in someone that they can't see for themselves. Makima's take on leadership is close, but it's a twisted version of how Senku does it. For example, let's look at how Makima is able to control power, one of the most chaotic characters in Chainsaw Man. The more blunt answer is by brute force. Power tells us that she was stopped by Makima before she could find Miaoi, implying that this was done against her will. But after this, the way Makima treats power is much more subtle. Look at what she does when Power gets in trouble for killing the sea cucumber devil. She very calmly tells Power to be quiet. Power shakes in fear and when asked if she's capable of producing results, gives Makima a yes right away. No yelling, no name calling, no violence. All Makima does is quietly, yet assertively, No, no, be assertive! Beep, beep. Not insertive! Tell Power to quiet down. What she's doing is speaking Power's language. Power is a violent free spirit, so like an animal, she does what Makima says because Makima is asserting herself. But while someone like Himeno does this with the threat of force, Makima does it with her words alone, leading Power to be influenced by her own instincts rather than any actual violence. And obviously, this isn't the only way Makima uses her words to control people. For example, when Power shows up at his apartment, Aki is totally against it. He calls Makima up and he's like, you gotta take her back. Now, think about how Aki views himself. He views himself as dependable. He tells Denji what a loser he is, tells him he shouldn't be working for Makima, implying that Aki is the type of person that should be working for Makima. So, how does Makima change Aki's mind? She tells Aki that she trusts him more than anyone else. And suddenly, Aki blushes and completely goes along with it. And all she had to do was pander to Aki's preconceived notions. Aki already thinks he's dependable, so hearing Makima say the same thing makes him more agreeable to whatever Makima asks him to do. Notice the very subtle difference between this and what Senku does. Senku will ask you to do something. Say, for example, solve a math equation. Well, he would only ask you to do that if he thought you were good at math. So when someone like Senku, who is way smarter than the other characters, asks one of them to do something like solve a math equation, it makes them feel smarter than they thought they were. Meanwhile, Makima just mirrors you. She gets Aki to do a complete 180 by parroting his own self-perception. She doesn't inspire Aki with any of her own qualities. All she does is repeat what Aki already thinks of himself. And that's the dangerous game Makima plays. She doesn't challenge people to be different like Senku does. She doesn't inspire the other characters with her own charisma or special talents. She uses your hopes and dreams against you. And there's no better example of this than Denji. But before I get into that, make sure to like the video if you've been enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. Now, at one point, Denji comes to Makima and tells her that maybe his dream of girls isn't what he wanted. 
He still kinda wants it, but isn't really sure. Makima sees this as the golden opportunity. Before Denji has time to think, Makima suddenly charms him. And notice the contrast between this and the scene with Power. Power lets Denji do what he wants and then he feels empty. But Makima takes control and convinces Denji that this is what he wants. She took his dream of girls, twisted it into a goal of being with Makima, and used it to get Denji to do what she wants. And that's how Makima is able to lead the other characters, even though she doesn't have the traditional qualities of a leader. She takes someone else's dream, makes just a little twist, and uses it for her own gain. It's a very subtle kind of leadership, but it's way more dangerous than someone forcing you to do what they want, or inspiring others to follow you by presenting them with your own dream. Because when someone uses force, you're only doing what the other person wants. And when someone inspires you with their dream, it's still their dream, but now it's something you're sharing. As a leader, they are sharing that dream with you. But with Makima, the characters are actually convinced that her goals are their goals. They don't share anything. Now, Makima's take on leadership is clearly effective, but as I've been implying throughout the video, it's also very toxic. Because the way Senku does it, he's actually building up the other characters with genuine affirmations. But Makima is only using the character's self-perceptions. The ideas she conveys to people and the words and actions she uses don't match. When Makima first meets Denji, she says that he's a human. He's not a devil or a fiend. He's just a person. But then in the next chapter that was cut from the anime, Denji doesn't want to follow Makima's orders and go after the devil. Suddenly, Denji's not a person anymore. Suddenly, Makima talks about Denji like he's a dog and talks about how he can be euthanized. So when she wants to charm Denji, she builds him up. But then she uses that to tear him down as soon as he disobeys her. Same thing with power. Makima tells Denji that power is rational unlike typical fiends. She plays into power's perception of herself as a genius. But that's not really how Makima treats her. If Makima respected power's intelligence, she would have heard her out in the incident with the sea cucumber devil. But she doesn't do that at all. Instead, she talks down to power like she's a pet, tells her to be quiet. She says she doesn't care who did what, just that they get results. Again, the danger in Makima's leadership can be seen when you compare it to Senku's. Senku only delegates something to another character when he honestly believes they're capable of getting the job done. Otherwise, he wouldn't do it. It's a genuine affirmation that inspires that character to live up to Senku's expectations. It helps that character become a better person. But with Makima, she determines your self-worth based on whether it benefits her. If it'll get them to do what she wants, Makima will mirror whatever a character thinks about themselves. As soon as they don't agree with her, Makima replaces their self-confidence with self-pity. It might seem like she's being subtle in the world of Chainsaw Man, but we the readers see what she's doing. And while it is incredibly toxic, it also makes for an intense story. Because with a character like Senku, the way he inspires other characters also inspires readers. You see him challenge characters, and then when the characters struggle to eventually live up to those expectations, you're like, wow, Senku's a great main character. You watch as Senku leads the other characters, and as a result, you get charmed by his practical charisma. That's one way to get readers hooked on a story, but that wouldn't work in Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man isn't the kind of optimistic story that Dr. Stone is. Characters in Chainsaw Man die left and right, and everyone is actually kinda shitty. Plus, Denji doesn't even know what he wants. So, while his unhinged nonsense does charm people, he obviously can't lead characters like Senku does. Instead, Fujimoto takes a different approach. Instead of pulling readers in with a story of optimism and hope, he gets them hooked on an intense story where the characters are all following Makima, even though something is off. Readers see Makima charm the other characters, but the more they spend time with her, the more they begin to question her motives and realize something isn't quite right. It's actually pretty genius when you think about it, because Fujimoto crafts this loud, violent world, and then he just places Makima right in the background. While you start Chainsaw Man for the blood and gore, you stay to find out what Makima is really up to. It's just as subtle as her toxic leadership. And it's another reason why Chainsaw Man is so addicting. And that's the terrifying power Makima has over other characters and readers. But here's where I'd like your input. Is Makima's leadership really that deep, or am I just complicating it? Share your thoughts and see what everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week on my community tab. 
And if you'd like another Chainsaw Man discussion like this one, then you have to check out my video on Chainsaw Man pacing. In that video, I explain why Chainsaw Man pacing is better than everyone thinks. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.